everybody that we're doing it before connection time and I graciously thank Shane and the elders in the church for allowing me to do this, especially on this the last week of Black History Month. This is not obviously my road trip story, but it's a road trip story that's very near and dear to my heart. And I'm going to use my mother's quilt, which is the map that many escaping slaves used indirectly and directly to make their escape. This is technically the road trip of a gentleman named Pleasant Hunley, who happens to be my great, 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 great grandfather, who on a tombstone in the corner of the cemetery in Dresden simply reads, Pleasant Hunley, born a slave, Charleston City, Virginia, died a free man, Dresden, Ontario. He took this road trip simply to make his life better and eventually make our lives better as it brought us here to where we are. Each block of the quilt represents a different part or map or for those of you old enough to remember the old CAA triptychs where they used to draw it out for you and put little places of interest on the map for you to stop at, different things like that. The first block is always the railroad block or Jacob's Ladder. It always symbolized to the slaves when they saw this particular block or particular way a quilt was folded, that it was time to get ready. There was a conductor in the area. They were getting ready for passengers. It's also known as Jacob's Ladder, who we all know of Jacob's dream regarding a ladder to heaven, which signified a better place for all of us. The next part of the map was the carpenter's block. This particular block, this one here, represented that, that the carpenter's son, Jesus, would be with you the entire trip of this journey. Obviously, it wasn't going to be an easy journey. It was going to require a lot of faith and hope and perseverance. The bear paw block directed the travelers to follow the bear paws or animal tracks that were through the woods. What that did was it kept them off of the main roads or trails and the other thing that that did was it gave them the idea, and we all know that animal tracks always lead to food and water. So it provided them with a less likely way of being caught, but it also provided them with per provisions to keep going. At the crossroads, which is this one down here, is actually Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio was the one stop that they all made because it represented many different routes at which point you could take. My ancestor took the route that brought them through Chatham, through Windsor, Chatham, and all the way up to Dresden. You could take different routes that took you to different places. Like many of us, when you reach a crossroads, the path you take determines many parts of the rest of your life. The flying geese and the birds in the air, which are these two down here, always meant to keep an eye on the birds. So we all know birds spook easy. So if you saw the birds suddenly taking flight from where they were or something like that, it would symbolize that there was obviously something going on in the area. The geese indicated which way to go. Geese fly north in the springtime. We always get sad when they go south in the winter because it means the cold's coming. For escaping slaves, seeing the geese, the point of that arrow, always pointed north, giving you a direction to go. The funny crooked one at the bottom is what they call the drunkard's path. It was a part of the map reminding them to make a zigzag pattern. Never go in a straight line. Straight lines are easy to follow, easy to track. As many of us know from making travels and as we heard from Shane and Yvonne, sometimes taking the zigzag route leads to many great discoveries within your life. Finally, the boss block down here, this one here, it's the one we're all very familiar with. It's the North Star. The North Star and the night sky always, always, always pointed to north to Canada. It provided them that light, that guidance, and that hope that there was always always, always freedom waiting for them. So while I didn't take this road trip personally, 
It's a road trip that emanates with myself, my family, my children, and many generations of us all to come. And I'm always blessed and grateful that my ancestor Pleasant chose to take this journey, that he had the courage and the faith to go on this particular road trip. I'm not sure that given the circumstances, if I would have had that perseverance and grace and fearlessness to do it. So that's my road trip story. I know a little heavier than some other ones, but definitely one well worth taking. Thank you.